Psst, what's up? Let's play a game. First, it's time to turn on your imagination. I'll give you a second. Go ahead, turn it on. Sounds like you're ready. All right, here we go. I want you to imagine a world without video games. <gasps> That's right, I said it. Think about what your life would be like if video games did not exist at all. Not even as apps on your phone. Tell the truth, it's actually kind of hard to imagine, isn't it? Or maybe it's just too much of a bummer. <laughs> but here's the thing. There once was a time before video games. <sighs> no, not prehistoric times when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> the wheel! Or caveman times. In fact, there's a good chance you might even know someone who was alive during these dark and infinitely less fun times. Uh, hello there, Sonny. No, not a 1,000-year-old man. We're talking the relatively recent past. Ah. You see, video games weren't really a thing until the 1970s. The 70s! That's right. Less than 50 years ago. Whoa. And your grandparents, and maybe even your parents, probably remember when video games first became popular. Well, yeah, back in the day, we used to collect quarters so we could play Miss Pac-Man in the arcade. Nice. But who invented video games? How did they conquer the world? And can video games actually make your brain grow? Get ready, player one. It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone! We make smarting! Lots of fun! But who's smarted? Welcome back to the Olympic Finals, where Bruce Baumgart holds a commanding lead over the field. The players have resumed their positions and are warming up their fingers for what should be a fast and furious final round. Okay, the judge is about to give the signal, and we're underway! Ah, you almost got me. Alright, uh, dodge, dodge, I got you now! Huh? Wait, no! And it's all over, folks! Baumgart, employing his patented two-handed technique, has made quick work of the competition, making him the winner of the first official Intergalactic Space War Olympics! The first official what now? The first official intergalactic space war Olympics. Ah, some of you may have thought we were talking about the actual Olympics or even the Winter Olympics. Nope. In 1972, they held the first intergalactic space war Olympics at Stanford University in California. Uh, space war. Is that like a... No, space wars is definitely not Star Wars. <laughs> It was an early computer game in which players controlled rocket ships and fired photon torpedoes at one another. And Bruce Baumgart was a regular space war wizard. He's a space war wizard. He crushed the highest score. A space war wizard, but sadly there'd be no more. Yes, sadly, the Intergalactic Space War Olympics of 1972 was the first and last of its kind. Ah. However, Despite being short-lived, it did open the door to a brand new type of competition. Can you guess what it is? Is it A sports, E sports, I sports, O sports, or U sports? If you said E sports, you're right. Today, E sports, short for electronic sports, is a huge deal. I mean a really huge deal. One recent E sports championship drew nearly 2 million viewers. <gasps> and gave out $34 million in prize money. It's estimated that close to three out of every four Americans play video games, and that number is only growing. Now, let's see. I'm guessing you listening may have played a video game recently, either on a computer, tablet, or smartphone, or maybe on a gaming console. After all, there's more than one million different video games on the market today. But that wasn't always the case. In fact, Getting your hands on a video game used to be hard. The first video game consoles for home use were sold in 1972, the same year as the first official intergalactic space war Olympics. The very first video game console was called the Magnavox Odyssey. Ooh. 
and it was revolutionary because it hooked right up to your television. But even though it was an incredible technological feat, it was hard to play and didn't catch on. It wasn't until another company came out with its console that video games really took off. Have you ever heard of Atari? Atari helped pioneer the video game industry and popularized such classics as Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Centipede, Frogger, Missile Command, and Asteroids, which was kind of similar to Space Wars. But even for Atari, things started out way simpler. Let's see how smarty pants you are when it comes to video games. What was the name of the very first Atari game that kicked off America's video game craze? Was it A. Plink, B. Plonk, C. Ping, or D. Pong? I know they sound funny, but I promise one of those is the right answer. Hmm, think you know it? Well, stick around to find out if you're right. And no Googling, but you can ask an adult if they know. Welcome back to Who Smarted? Before the break, we asked if you knew the name of the first video game produced by Atari. Was it Plink, Plonk, Ping, or Pong? The answer is Pong. Did you guess it? In 1972, Atari created a video game version of Ping Pong that was so simple anyone could play. In fact, after you finish this episode, Google Pong, P-O-N-G, and see how simple it is. It's basically two lines and a circle. But those lines and circle were so popular, they launched the entire video game industry. Before long, all sorts of video game companies were producing all kinds of games. Hey, see if you can guess who the most famous video game character of all time is. Here, I'll give you a hint. Imagine you're the head of a video game company, and you're looking for a surefire hit. A young game designer walks into your office and says... So I got this idea for a video game. It's about a guy wearing carpenter's overalls who has to climb a bunch of ladders to try and get to his girlfriend. Oh, no. But it's hard to do because there's a giant gorilla throwing barrels at him <laughs> that he has to jump over or duck under. Also, the guy's Italian. But that's one of the for the and, and, and he's got a huge mustache. What do you think? So what do you think? You know who it is? Did you say Mario? That's right. It's me, Mario. But even more importantly, if you were the president of a video game company and a game developer pitched you that idea, would you have agreed to it? Or would you have called him crazy and kicked him out? Well, as you probably know, the head of Nintendo did not call game designer Shigeru Miyamoto crazy. Instead, in 1981, he agreed to let Miyamoto create the game Donkey Kong. And the rest is history. <laughs> Fun fact, the original Mario character was just named Jumpman. It wasn't until later that Nintendo gave this mysterious mustachioed Italian a new name, Mario. Mario! A new job, plumber. And in 1985, a new game, Super Mario Brothers. Which only went on to become one of the best-selling video games of all time. Game designer Miyamoto became a giant in the industry. He went on to become president of Nintendo and helped create the Nintendo DS, the Wii, the Wii U, the Switch, and many more. But not all video games were destined for fame and fortune. Quick quiz. Which of the following are not actual video game titles? A. Attack of the Mutant Camels. B. Tongue of the Fat Man. C. Ninja Hamster. Or D, Princess Tomato in Salad Kingdom. Remember, you're to guess which of these names were not the titles of actual video games. Got your answer? Did you say A, Attack of the Mutant Camels? Guess again, that game was produced by Atari in 1983. How about B, Tongue of the Fat Man? Sorry, that video game came out on the Commodore 64 system. So that leaves C, Ninja Hamster and Princess Tomato in Salad Kingdom. Ooh, a tomato! If you guessed either of those, well, I'm sorry to say you're also wrong. What? All of those silly-sounding titles were actual video games in the 1980s. 
Video games have definitely come a long way since those early games. The graphics are hugely improved, as is the player experience. But one thing that hasn't changed, the debate over whether video games are good or bad for you. That is enough video games for today, but I'm almost finished with the level. Like with many things, playing video games too much can be bad for your eyes and turn you into a couch potato. <laughs> However, the news isn't all bad. New research shows that playing video games can actually be good for you. Listen to this. Jet Nickerson reporting, a study in 2014 by researchers in Germany found that playing Super Mario 64 caused areas of the human brain to actually increase in size. Researchers scanned the brains of participants both before and after having them play Super Mario for 30 minutes a day for two months. When the players' brains were scanned the second time, they found the gray matter in the right hippocampus, the right prefrontal cortex, and the cerebellum had all increased compared to a control group that hadn't played any video games. Among the parts that grew the most were the regions responsible for strategic planning and fine motor skills. Ha! See? Video games are good for you. Whoa, 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 not so fast. Like we said, when it comes to playing video games, you don't want to go overboard. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no more than two hours of screen-based entertainment a day, and that includes video games. <laughs> two hours may not seem like much, but hey, it wasn't long ago video games were just a figment of someone's imagination. <laughs> Big shout out and happy belated birthday to Andrew in Maine. Thanks for being a Who Smarted Super Fan. This episode, Video Games, was written by Rebecca Ratliff Cameron and voiced by Rebecca Ratliff Cameron, Colin Cameron, Adam Tex Davis, Jason Donkey Kong Williams, Max Kamaski, and Jerry Colbert. Additional voices, technical direction, and sound design by Josh Miss Pac-Man Han. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Centipede Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. <laughs>